Well, it's exactly 10 years since the modern art gallery Baltic in Gateshead opened its doors to the public. The former flour mill was transformed into a centre for contemporary art at a cost of £45 million, with much of that money coming from the National Lottery. Well, since then, it's had 4.5 million visitors through its doors and attracted international acclaim. Sharuna Saga has tonight's Look North report. July the 13th, 2002. Who would have thought that people would queue in their thousands for the opening of an art gallery at one minute past midnight? But that's exactly what happened. You know, it's like being in Trafalgar Square at midnight or down the quayside come New Year. It's just something that you want to be part of. We want to get in there and see what it's like, basically. It was a once in a lifetime event. You know, I had to be here. Well, I thought it would be a treat for the kids. A uh, major cultural event in the northeast. Since then, the Baltic has hosted 179 exhibitions by 335 artists from 50 different countries. It's become internationally known as a centre of excellence in the field of contemporary art. It's been a terrific 10 years to go from no reputation, no identity, to being one of the best known brands in contemporary art in the UK and arguably one of the best known brands in the world. There have been so many highlights here over the last 10 years. Anthony Gormley unveiled his Angel of the North in Gateshead four years earlier and the artist returned here with his domain field. Local people of all ages had their bodies covered in wet plaster, the cast becoming the basis for a glistening army of steel figures. What I'm trying to do is make a reservoir in which the collective energy of a group of people can be focused. Oh Lord, still you always keep me wanting Another internationally known figure came here to show her work. Yoko Ono's Between the Sky and My Head took over two floors of the Baltic. The success of the Baltic undoubtedly attracted the American photographer Spencer Tunick to Gateshead and to the Sage, where he invited nearly 1,700 people to strip off for an astonishing portrait of life on Tyneside. I think they were hilarious, in good spirits, everyone was so sweet to me, it was, a, it was great to work with these people. But that was a bit chilly, but surely the highlight of the Baltic to date was hosting the Turner Prize 2011, the first time it had left the Tate, and only the second time it had been taken out of London. But a huge factor in the Baltic's success in bringing in so many visitors is that it enjoys generous subsidies and so offers free admission. In today's economic climate though, there are fears that this might not continue and other ways of raising money are seen as essential. Museums and galleries across the country are now working very, very hard to find other ways of generating income. We work incredibly hard to develop our own retail offer, our cafes and restaurants, to work with foundations who can support us, to develop personal relationships with people who want to support the gallery directly. So there are a lot of work goes on to, to alleviate the cost on the public purse. For now, the people of Tyneside and from much further afield can still enjoy exhibitions like this one from the former Turner Prize winner, Mark Wallinger, at no cost. How long that will remain, though, is anyone's guess. Sharuna Saga, BBC Look North, Gateshead.